we're going to be basically going through an overview of the TAC Indigenous Arts Program. And then uh, Erica will do the same with OAC's Indigenous Arts Programs. Um, and then we'll uh, talk about other things like COVID re related protocols, uh, writing, um, the actual grant and uh, budgeting tips. And there'll be time for a Q&A at the end. And we'll just um, ask you to add your questions to the Q&A um, function on the Zoom. Um, if you have any questions about that, just uh, message us and uh, Mohammed can help you with that. Um, so yeah, um, I'll just jump right in to uh, introducing you to the program I manage. Um, so this program was created in 2015 and um, it's an annual multidisciplinary project um, program specifically for Indigenous artists, collectives and organizations. Um, for the purpose of this program, we Indigenous uh, is um, a person that identifies as First Nations, uh, Inuit, or Métis. <clears throat> the uh, program was designed to increase participation and access to arts funding in Toronto. Um, and it has a rolling deadline uh, that uh, is open from about January 2nd to November 2nd each year. Um, so you can apply any time during the year, basically, with the exception of December. Um, so project development is the uh, first category. Um, so you can just follow along with the slides there. Um, so project development is a sort of, um, you're at the very beginning stage of a project. Um, the category supports the growth and development of a project. So you kind of have a seed of an idea. Um, it's designed to support research, um, maybe you're searching for methodologies or um, a process to approaching your project, um, you're seeking relationships uh, that are collaborative in nature, um, looking for support material, accessing knowledge keepers, um, uh, you know, uh, accessing archival materials, anything like that. Uh, the Budget can be up to $3,000 and you can apply for 100% of that uh, budget. And um, it can include uh, fees for um, elders, uh, mentors, um, attending networking or professional development events. Um, and uh, I know this is a interesting time that we're in, but you can if you have access to rental of a space um uh, or need to do an interview or something like that uh, you can cover the cost of that and um other archival materials or sourcing other materials for your project so that's that first category uh second category is uh creation um so this is you're in the creation stage so you've done sort of the bulk of that uh, planning and that research and you're ready to start actually producing and creating the project uh, it can include research uh, definitely um, film and media production uh, commissions um, you can apply for up to a hundred percent of your project budget again so up to ten thousand um, <laughs> Eligible expenses are uh, fees paid to your collaborators, uh, pay yourself, artist fees, um, mentors, honoraria for cultural consultation and guidance, studio costs, materials, um, you know, technical um, fees, uh, rental of equipment and software, all of that. Um, so the third category is exhibition presentation dissemination and um, this is like it sounds so you've done the creation of your project you're ready to sort of present it um, and exhibit it or disseminate it uh, whatever sort of best fits the description of what what you've done 
um, and you can apply for up to $15,000. Uh, for this category, it can't be 100% of the ask. You should have some other source of funding sort of in the works, whether that's from your own uh, private funding or um, another governmental funding um, included in that budget. Um, eligible expenses can be for, um, well, obviously go towards exhibition fees, uh, administrative fees, if you have to uh, rent a space, um, uh, pay folks to help you install it, um, you need a rehearsal space or um, anything like that. This um, category does not include film production, unfortunately. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and uh, for dissemination costs, it can include obviously uh, publicity and marketing um, outreach kind of fees or costs. And uh, the last category is uh, Indigenous art sector. Um, so this category supports projects that develop and advance the practice of Indigenous arts and artists in Toronto. Uh, you can apply for project funding up to 15 thousand again um, and like the exhibition dissemination category um, it can't be a hundred percent of the ask so you should be looking for other sources of funding um, for your budget um, so projects can include activities like workshops or conferences um, events to further um, expand indigenous arts practices uh, the development of toolkits and resources to support Indigenous arts. Um, uh, individuals can apply to this program. Uh, you don't have to be an organization, but uh, to keep in mind that um, it must benefit a group of Indigenous arts professionals, so it can't just be yourself. It's, uh, you think more community-minded with this category. Um, and some of the expenses can include um, uh, artistic production and min fees, uh, venue for say that event or um, you know uh, software if, if a lot of it is going online like a lot of things are going these days uh, to you know upgrade your zoom <laughs> um, to cover um, you know internet costs and that sort of thing. Uh, marketing outreach making sure that uh, you are getting um, the people you want to be involved in the project involved. Um, and expenses uh, that are eligible for any grant actually uh, in the TAC's programs are el uh, elder expenses and child care expenses. Um, and so the same for this program, of course. Um, and so the kinds of projects that have been funded um, by this program um, are Various. <laughs> so this is a, unlike the other discipline programs at TAC, this one encompasses any kind of discipline. Um, uh, so we've seen, uh, you know, of course, high tanning and traditional arts uh, workshops, um, you know, animated films, um, spoken word events, um, you know, uh, someone's workshopping their play. Uh, writing their play, um, recording their album. Um, you know, they've already produced a, a body of work and so they're looking to exhibit it or install it. Um, so a wide variety of projects. Um, and, you know, I welcome challenging our, <laughs> what else we can uh, help fund. Um, and you can always just call me and um, ask me questions about your project if you are at all wondering, you know, if your project is um, is the right fit for the program. And um, before we move into the application, I'm just going to talk a bit about application accessibility support. So that's the next slide. There we go. Um, so who is eligible? Uh, applicants who are deaf or identify as having a disability. Um, and need support to complete their grant application can apply for the funds, um, can apply for funds to cover the cost of uh, a service provider to actually help them fill out the application. So this is your, you're thinking about 
uh, filling out an application, but you know that you um, would qualify for this accessibility support, you would call me up and um, um, or write to me and uh, ask me about uh, getting accessibility support. And then um, you can apply for up to $500 uh, to, um, to pay a service provider to um, help you write the grant. Uh, basically, it's, you would provide all of the content of the grant and then that person would actually help to just plug it into the, the application. Um, and so, yeah, we, we just really emphasize to call the grant manager um, first before just um, uh, reaching out to your, your service provider. And uh, so now I'll just ask Mohammed if we can, um, he can share his screen and uh, we can basically just go through some of the, um, the tabs in the actual application so you can see what it looks like if you haven't um, been on our Smart Simple site yet. And so the first uh, sort of page when you open up a grant application um, is all about um, basically filling out who you are in terms of, well, first it's introducing <laughs> the actual application. Um, you're, there's this uh, tab, self, voluntary self-identification. Uh, it's voluntary, so you don't have to fill it out, but um, you know it's handy for our stats to know who is applying to our programs, um, helps us kind of better support um, any like support the community basically in knowing um, who is actually accessing our grants and who isn't. So that's helpful for us. Um, but again, it's voluntary. So then your applicant ID, uh, is all you, you fill out all of the information there. Um, and then project details. So this is uh, just a, like a, where you're gonna choose your category. And um, it gives a brief little description of it there. Uh, your start date and end date are kind of important. Um, so there's like a little line there that says um, your project must um, it should be at least three to four months after you submit the application. That just gives us time to actually have a grant review panel assess it and give you notice of the results. So um, we don't fund retroactively, uh, so that is also a why. Um, your end date, uh, you give us a little project summary, basically a quick little, this is what you're doing from these dates to these dates. Um, and maybe these are the some of the collaborators that you're are involved and location of of um, your activity and yeah you can plug in your neighborhood improvement area if that actually applies to you and then artistic statement um, so this is this is about you and uh, your vision as an artist um, I know some folks maybe get intimidated by an artistic statement and um, maybe you haven't written one before. It's kind of like your little manifesto in a way. Um, it can be more related to the actual project you're applying for. It can be more um, about you as an artist and how you function. It could be a, about a little bit of both. Um, so we just ask that you um, kind of just tell tell us a bit about yourself as an artist and how you work and uh, what your work is about that sort of thing and um, for indigenous arts we also ask that you um, you know tell us a bit about you as an indigenous person and um, you can tell us about your nationhood uh, maybe it's a land base um, your communities um, anything that you would like to share there um, and then project description. So this is the bulk of your application. Um, your goals in your project. So what is it you're setting out to do? So kind of like think of the five W's. Um, you know, do you have a title for your project? Share that. If there was any preliminary work that led up to this point, um, you know, tell us about that. 
um, project collaborators, um, where you're asked to share later on down this tab. Um, what else? Sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at uh, Muhammad scrolling here. Uh, your impact. So um, there, there is a tab there that you won't have to fill out if it's creation or project development, and I think that's the one. Public impact. So that's more about you're in those creation. You're in that creation phase, so you don't have to fill that out for exhibition, presentation, dissemination, or art sector. You do have to fill that out. So what is your desired public impact? What's your anticipated impact for for community, for yourself? Um, so that's, so that's public impact. So for community and your audience. Uh, and then outcome is for more yourself or the other artists involved in your project. Um, so um, just kind of painting this picture of what your desired sort of outcomes are. Um, and then you're asked to share your project contributors. So bios are needed. And um, so that please include yourself. Your, if you're the one applying, even on behalf of uh, a collective or organization, include um, your bio there and your name there. Um, for collectives, make sure that you're putting all the collective members in there and their bios. Um, a note about collectives for this program is um, the majority of collective members have to be Indigenous uh, and artists. Um, but um, obviously you can have members that are non-Indigenous, but the majority of a collective has to be Indigenous. And for organizations applying, um, it has to be artistically led and controlled by Indigenous uh, individuals. Um, and to also include um, for organizations like your board of directors and um, and a list of them and then also actual project contributors so say you have facilitators or um, consultants or mentors or anything like that that are are contributing to the project then please include them there uh, and budget information so everyone's favorite part, uh, <laughs> we have this handy little tab on the side that says budget. And so you just click on that and that's where you fill out the actual template. Um, so you basically, we have uh, fields that you would just fill in. Um, TAC's field is there too. So you would put your request from TAC in this, um, in this template. Um, if you have any other sources of revenue, um, you'll see that there's a little drop down menu next to a lot of them, and that's um, for the status. So you can put if it's pending or confirmed. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, obviously, artist fees. So um, you have your revenues and then your expenses. Um, and, uh, you know, make sure that. So for this template part, think more broadly so all of your artist fees you would just put the total of all of the artist fees including yourself your collaborators any of the artists involved that you're paying just put it into that budget line um, production technical fees obviously so say you're recording an album you know that might look like the audio engineer or the actual facilities uh, the fees going into that so that goes under the production technical fees. Some of these lines can kind of blend and people might have different ideas on like, no, this should go here, this should go here. Um, that's where um, the budget notes come in later. But basically for this template, you just have to make sure that your um, revenues match your expenses. Um, actually, the, the whole template won't let you um, it won't save, I think, Muhammad. I can't remember, but it won't. It won't uh, let you submit the the application. I think if you if um, the um, expenses don't match the revenue. That is correct. Yep, they need to match. Right. So um, so yeah, 
that this won't, it won't let you fail at that. You, <laughs> you have to make the match. Um, and then down below, you have the budget notes. And then so that's where it gets a little more detailed and you can tell us um, a little bit more about those line items of like the artist fiends are going to myself and then they're going to my mentor and they're going to this other artist collaborator and you can be um, a little more detailed and um, that's really handy for our grant review panelists because you know they would like to know how, how you're spending the money and how is that contributing to your project and so that's the budget in a nutshell if you have further questions uh, we can come back to it at the end stats and mapping is uh, primarily again for us but also um, you know back in the before times of COVID, <laughs> they they, uh, they also would let us know like how many people were attending uh, a performance or something like that. So they're largely for audiences. Um, however, um, you know we we do have audiences online now too, and um, you know if if there are ways that people can um, can can find out who is uh, watching your performance online or or looking at your exhibit online or any of those things, um, you could still uh, populate that stats and mapping field there. Um, and then venues too, for if you had a venue for, for a performance or something like that. Ah, yes, we have a new uh, field there that I, I wasn't aware of, I don't think. Um, so that's stats and mapping. And then you have the accessibility um, uh, support field. And so this is, aside from what I was talking about before for your own accessibility support for the application, this is actually for your project, for um, accessibility support for either yourself and or collaborators to actually complete your project. Um, so, um, you would apply to or fill out this tab and let us know um, who the artists are that you're working with that need this support. Um, so uh, one of the common sort of questions is can it include um, ASL for an audience? Um, and so it this support is not for an audience, it's actually for the ar artist involved in creating the project or producing the project. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, and if you have any questions around that and things are not clear, <laughs> uh, please let me know and I, I can help you out with that. And so that's the bulk of the application. Those are the main tabs. Um, and yo, oh, there's also support material. Sorry, I didn't get that far down the line. Um, fairly, fairly important tab. And this is where you share with us, um, you know, uh, what you've done in the past as an artist, or if you have something relevant to the project you're applying for, to um, include audio files, um, images, uh, press clippings. Um, there's another sort of area where you can um uh, yeah provides printed support material um you know if you want that to be your cv or something else you can you can put that there too um and just any links that you have just make sure that you know if they have if they're password protected to um to supply us with a password um, for that but we have grants assistants that check over all this stuff. And um, if there's anything that uh, links that don't work, um, they will let you know. So yeah, that is the, that is, that is uh, the majority of all of the tabs for application and what it looks like. Um, and so yeah, we'll just go back to our regular slides now and get out of um, smart simple. Okay, so um, yeah, just to share a few more slides and then I'm gonna hand it over to Erica. Uh, our grant review process at the TAC um, 
for my program is that the panel members uh, who are called peer assessors are made up of all Indigenous artists and cultural leaders from Toronto and the sh surrounding area. Uh, they represent different disciplines, um, communities and cultural backgrounds. Um, and yeah, so we invite them to be on the panels based on the group of applications that I currently have at one point in time where it's there, there's enough to go to a panel. And I just try to make sure that um, all the disciplines that people are applying for are represented in the panel members at the table. Um, and yeah, so the three words at the bottom are, are basically like the criteria um, basis for which the peer assessors are, are primarily looking at when they're reviewing the application. So the viability of a project, um, we, we say artistic merit and the impact. And of course, and by impact, that also means for you, the artist applying. Um, yeah, so that's uh, the process. So basically it goes to panel um, and then um, it, they're assessed and uh, it's hard to give a timeline, but basically somewhere within a two week frame <laughs> after that, you get the results and uh, you'll get uh, an email through the Smart Simple system. Um, and so let's say your project got approved. Uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, you get your result in about three to four months after your submission date, not the assessment period. That only takes a couple weeks. But from your submission date, you can anticipate three to four months. Uh, try to do all the activities you included in your grant. Um, you know, if something changes um, your timeline or completion, of course, right now, as things are, uh, you know, that can definitely happen. Um, and, it's, and it's a little tricky to plan ahead for some things. Um, just inform me send me an email, give me a call, let me know um, what's going on. And um, I'll typically ask you for sort of a new timeline. And, um, and if, if things, uh, if you're reimagining your project in some way, um, to let me know what that is and, and give me a description of that. Um, and then, you know, on a, on a more sort of significantly um, bigger change <laughs> level if your organization or collective dissolves or merges or something like that so the entire sort of applicant is changing somehow then you definitely have to let us know and um, you know we can talk about it from there and hopefully you don't have to return the funds but um, yeah that's kind of a more um, crucial point to let us know um, and yeah, to otherwise uh, document your process, write down thoughts, um, you know, if you're seeing any impacts, you're getting any feedback, that sort of thing, because all of that can come in really handy during your report writing. <laughs> um, so uh, that can help you write your report. So you have sort of documentation via, if it's visuals, or if, you're, if you were sort of just writing things down as you went along, uh, you can, um, that can all feed into your final report. Um, so it's going to ask you questions about like, what did you learn? How did you grow as an artist? Um, what did you see was impacted by your project? Um, and definitely welcome to share any challenges too. So sometimes projects don't go as planned and that's fine. Um, just let us know what did occur. Um, and what you learned from it and yeah share your success with us so um, you know if you want to um, you know send any images or links to the completed project like that um, we like to also share that with the community too um, so to include that and um, just a reminder that this is uh, you'll you will be issued as a t4a um, uh, for receiving this grant too um, the only instance where you don't actually is, um, I think I'm right about this, <laughs> is if you're a collective. 
So I don't believe collectives are issued a T4A just because there are more than one person and you're all individuals in the project. But if you're an individual or an organization, you're definitely um, taxed on this grant. And so that pretty much concludes my side of the program presentation. So I'm going to hand it over to Erica now. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks, Tosh, for um, all that information. And there's just so many crossovers with um, the programs that uh, um, we have for Indigenous artists at uh, the OAC and how the TAC functions and the OAC functions. Um, I'll try not to repeat some of what you've said, but um, I do have a little bit more programs um, or more programs to go over uh, with the attendees in terms of um, the types of programs that are available. Um, this is all very interesting though to be on this side and see how this functions. So bear with me and uh, as I present, it's sort of uh, my first time on Zoom presenting a PowerPoint um, to an audience, um, but I just want to say thank you uh, Tosh for inviting uh, me to uh, host this week. And hopefully um, we can sort of demystify the, uh, you know, granting process, the jury process, and show you a little bit of, um, you know, uh, where our application, how our applications look and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so let's see here. Um, all right. So Mohammed's going to be doing my slides, <laughs> and we'll I'll do my best to uh, signal you when uh, we go to the next one here. Um, all right. So uh, like I said, Wache, Sego, Ani, Bonjour, welcome. Um, and I just want to uh, say a little bit about the Ontario Arts Council. We're an arm's length agency of the Ministry of Heritage and Sport, Tourism and Cultural Industries. The OAC supports professional artists and arts activities across the province. Um, we offer 50 plus grantee programs, project grants, um, which we're going to be talking about today, but we also have uh, operating grants for arts organizations available. Um, so the OAC in general supports all forms uh, of artistic practices um, and most of the programs I'm speaking to are also uh, multidisciplinary in scope um, in terms of available to uh, artists and working in any discipline. Um, so the ones I'm going to be talking to today, um, these are the, the main programs that support uh, Indigenous artists. Uh, so we have Indigenous Arts Projects, Indigenous Artists in Communities and Schools, Indigenous Visual Arts Materials Grant, um, we have Skills and Career Development, uh, Curatorial Projects, Dance Training Projects, I won't be speaking to the last two. Um, but those are open to uh, Indigenous artists, but also um, culturally diverse artists such as Black and people of color. Um, so this is just some project examples for you to consider. Like I said, we support all types of activities. Um, this is just to, to give you an idea of what you can come to the OAC and the TAC to apply for, um, you know, perhaps your project um, requires more money than what the OAC provides in one project program. So you can go to the TAC perhaps for some of the, the, the grant uh, funds if you're based in Toronto, and then you can come to the OAC uh, for some of the other uh, funds as well, but we cover all kinds of projects like uh, mural, uh, mural projects in the community, art, art exhibitions, theater and dance productions, music creation and recording, um, artists and youth mentorship projects. I won't read through the whole list, but um, you know, it, we're pretty much open to any type of, uh, of coming to us for any type of arts activity and then 
we just ask you to give us a call and we can discuss um, the best of, you know, program that fits uh, your project. So I wanted to provide some, um, you know, these are uh, examples of projects that we've supported in the past. So just to give you an idea of the types of projects that you can come to us uh, to seek uh, support for. So this one is a birch bark canoe building in the uh, Anishinaabe Moan uh, traditional language. And this was with lead artist uh, Mike Ormsky. Um, this is, was supported through the Ar Indigenous Artists in Communities and Schools project. Um, and this took place in uh, Wanapate First Nations. And if you go to the next slide, Muhammad, it's just uh, the same project, but just uh, some more photos um, uh, from that uh, creation project in the creation project in the community. The next slide is uh, Artists and Communities Project as well. This is a collective creation project with Onmatazi performance uh, of the um, uh, sort of dance performance piece called Serpent People, uh, choreographed by uh, Penny Kuchi, uh, which took place in Nipissing First Nations. Um, this is another project uh, that took place in the schools with um, uh, a collective uh, from Six Nations, and this is uh, uh, was uh, photo workshops um, on um, sort of on the themes of body, land, and sovereignty. And this is, um, I guess, it was like a um, they created a book out of all the photos that the youth had taken on these themes and uh, put it together. And then I guess they had a shared camera. And this is a, a tobacco plant um, that was came from the shared camera that they used. This is um, a project uh, that was uh, led by the Woodland Cultural Center in Brantford and is uh, focused on black ash uh, basket making. So this can either be uh, in, sorry, just to go back, this can apply to either Indigenous arts projects or uh, Indigenous artists and communities and schools. So as I said, it's always good to give us a call, talk about the project. Sometimes it's the lead artists driving the project and want to create their own body of work. Uh, and sometimes that could include workshops in the community as well. Yeah, so that's the end of um, it's just project ideas. I like to show those because it gives people an idea of, um, you know, just some unique projects they could uh, take up in their own community or even on their own. So the programs that um, I specifically run are open to individual professional artists, um, which can involve a co-applicant, ad, ad hoc arts groups and collectives, uh, non-profit organizations, arts and non-arts orgs, First Nations and schools administered by First Nations. Um, you can receive up to three grants per year as an applicant. If you are part of a collective or an organization who receives funding, um, uh, you'd have to give me a call because there's a two grant uh, limit per year. So what do we mean by um, professional artists or arts professionals? Oh, I think he skipped a slide. Oh. Yeah. Um, all right, so uh, what we consider um, a you know, what does it mean to be a professional artist or arts professional, sorry, um, so that they have, de they have developed skills through practice or training, is recognized by artists working in the same artistic tradition, has a history of public presentation or publication and has seek, seeks payment for their work and actively practices their art. Um, so this is sort of the definition of, um, of a professional artist or arts professional. Um, you know, you don't have to be a full-time artist to, to apply, um, recognizing that many artists need to hold other jobs, um, you know, in order to survive. So just to keep that in mind. 
So here um, I'm going to go through uh, some project programs available uh, for Indigenous artists specifically. Um, so like the TAC, we have an Indigenous Arts Projects program. Um, this is a program that I um, manage and um, we have two deadlines per year, usually around September and March. Um, our deadline uh, calendar for the year is available usually around the end of December and then you can go to our website and it will have sort of the outlined actual dates, um, you know, where you have to apply. Um, so please check back in December to see the exact dates uh, for uh, September and March of next year. Um, so individuals can receive up to fifteen thousand uh, dollars. Collectives and groups twenty thousand and twenty five thousand for organizations. I uh, must be an indigenous organization to apply. Um, also, the collective must be uh, fifty percent indigenous. Um, and in the organization should be led by Indigenous people and the majority of the board should also be Indigenous. Um, so it can, this program is open to Ontario-based Indigenous artists, Indigenous arts collectives groups, Indigenous non-for-profit organizations, centres and councils. Um, so we have um, four categories for this program. So we have research and development, which will lead to the creation of new work. Um, you can apply for artistic research, exploration, experimentation, including workshops and residencies. Um, you can apply for the creation of new work. So this is available to any artist. It can be dance, theater, painting, um, craft, any, any artistic discipline. Um, you can come to this program uh, to have supported. We uh, also have a category for presentations, exhibitions, and festivals. Um, so this is for the presentation, promotion, distribution of art made by Indigenous artists specifically. Um, connections and partnerships. This is to bring together Indigenous artists uh, through conferences, workshops, delegations, and exchanges. Um, so yeah, it's a multidisciplinary program. Um, there are some things that are not eligible. Students, universities and colleges um, are not eligible uh, to apply. And there's some ineligible expenses like capital expenditures, um, fundraising activities that, that you cannot apply for. So again, please call me um, and we can discuss your project. Um, so another program that we have uh, is Indigenous Artists in Communities and Schools um, with two deadlines per year, usually September and March, or I'd say March and September, so I should flip that. Um, and you can receive up to $15,000, um, or if you're an Indigenous artist based in the Northern Flying community, you can receive up to $17,000. This program is open to Indigenous artists who are based in Ontario and elders. Um, so that's a little different from the Indigenous Arts Projects. Um, elders can apply uh, through this program for their um, uh, artistic project. Um, it's also open to collectives, groups, non-for-profit Indigenous organizations, centers and councils. So centers would be like friendship centers, community centers, and um, uh, First Nations, uh, Indigenous education authorities, and part-time teachers. Uh, so this is a, a program where um, artists apply to undertake uh, arts projects in their communities. So we have uh, uh, five categories. We have community arts projects, uh, Indigenous languages through the arts, training for community artists and animators, Indigenous artists in the schools, um, and then Indigenous artists in Northern Flying communities. So like the Indigenous Arts Project, sorry, Mohammed, um, I'll just say that this is also open to any artistic discipline. Um, and please give us a call. We can help you, um, you know, figure out, you know, what program best suits your project. And um, yeah, we'll move on to the other one. 
All right, so this one's a, a little bit different. This is Indigenous Visual Artist Materials Grant. Um, I work with uh, Lisa Worrell, who is the um, associate uh, officer that we support each other uh, in this program. But this is specifically uh, for materials um, only, and we've opened it up recently to um, include uh, purchase of materials or tools required to run or participate in a workshop, um, delivery costs uh, associated to transportation or shipping of materials and supplies, um, and travel costs for gathering natural materials. So I'll reference, you know, the you know canoe uh, the um, birch bark uh, canoe building project. Perhaps you know you need to rent a truck to drive to a certain area of the province. Um, and you can come to us to cover these specific costs. Um, so this program is run through, is one of our recommender programs. And um, what you do is you apply through one of the recommenders. We have about um, five Indigenous uh, orgs and groups that uh, do an intake of the applications, assess them and award, um, award the amount to the applicant. You can receive either 500 or 1,000, and it supports Ontario-based First Nations, Inuit, and Métis artists working in the visual arts, crafts, or traditional customary Indigenous art forms to create artwork. Um, so, you know, any type of material that you might need from uh, beads to um, paints, canvas, paper, uh, and any sort of small tools that you might also need for that. Um, the program is open um, between August and uh, towards the end of January. Each recommender has a different timeline. So I suggest that you go to the website and, and see um, the different deadline dates for each recommender uh, in our website. So this is a, a program that we have called Skills and Careers Develop Career Development for Indigenous Arts Professional and Arts Professionals of Color. Um, this is a, a program ran by Bushra Janaid, and um, uh, this, is, this is a unique program. We have one deadline uh, per year, and you can, re, uh, which is coming up, well, May 2021, <laughs> which is funny to say. Um, and you can receive up to $10,000. This program supports professional development and skill building opportunities that advance applicants' work and careers. Um, so you can, we fund all contemporary and traditional arts practices that are supported at the OAC. Um, this program is open to, to Indigenous arts professionals or arts professionals of color or ad hoc groups, collectives, made up of Indigenous arts professional, professionals or arts professionals of color. Um, so what we mean by arts professionals are artists, arts administrators, community animators, curators, programmers, technicians, and arts educators who are engaged in creating, promoting, and presenting, distributing, and programming artistic work. Um, so eligible activities, um, uh, can cover our, you can apply for our study and training to help cover the cost of arts professionals um, attendance at conferences, master classes, workshops, or training courses. Um, you can apply for mentorship to help cover the costs of develop, uh, developmental relationships between, between arts professionals and mentors, uh, internship and apprentice, uh, pr apprenticeship to help cover the costs of arts professionals working in uh, temporary positions that emphasize on the job training. The applicant must initiate the internship apprenticeship and it cannot replace a current position at the group art or arts organization. Um, also, this program supports documentation of artwork to help cover the cost of professional preparation of materials that document an artist's professional skills, training, and abilities. Um, so I don't manage this program, but uh, Bushra Janae does, and um, I believe she's on this uh, Zoom meeting. So um, I can provide contact information uh, to you 
in regards to reaching out to her about learning more about this program. So in regards to what, um, you know, what we cover in terms of expenses, um, within the programs that I've outlined, you know, with some ex exceptions, you can come to the OAC to cover artist fees, um, any type of supplies you might need, equipment rental, uh, shipping costs, studio or theater renter, uh, rentals, uh, mentor, elder participation fees, and honorarium. Um, you know, refreshments and food for community projects, travel costs, accessibility costs, transportation and childcare, ASL interpreters, um, production costs, promotion costs for a project. Um, keep in mind accessibility, any accessibility needs uh, for deaf and disabled artists, um, you would have to put that in your project expense uh, budget line. Um, any supports that you'll need or yourself as an individual, if you are a deaf or disabled artist, um, or um, would go into an accessibility request form that is separate from the project budget. So please uh, get in touch with us and you fill that out when you complete the application. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go in to show you how um, you know, link to our website and um, kind of show you, go into our grants training and show you how to access our applications because I know that that can be a barrier for many people. So I just want to, I like to show people our website because a lot of times they're like, we, you know, we, all of our applications are submitted online through our system called NOVA. And it's very similar to the TAC's online uh, system as well. So um, this is our website. Um, you know, we because we're used to navigating it, it might not be you know as straightforward to uh, folks coming to it for the first time. So if you look at the top here, these are all the grants available. And if you go to Indigenous artists. Um, these are the grants that I was talking about just earlier. So they're all listed here. Um, so you just kind of click into, you know, the, our, the page associated to the project program. And it will show you basically, you know, we ask you when you come to us for questions, we'll, a lot of times we'll direct you to the page where most of our information about the program, what's eligible, um, we'll have our deadline dates um, with the time that the, the application closes. Um, applications are available in NOVA two months uh, prior to the deadline date. So a March 4th deadline, January 4th is when it will become live. Um, we have our grant amount. So this might change uh, here and there based on, on you know, things that might be happening internally. So we always ask you to check, you know, um, check back and make sure that you are eligible to apply. So there's a lot of information here about the program and um, any other granting program that you might be interested. Um, one of the questions I saw was um, if we're Indigenous artists, can we apply to other uh, grants at the OAC. Yes, you're welcome to apply to theater grants or dance creation uh, projects. The difference is, is that we have uh, funds specifically set, a, set aside for Indigenous artists and um, the assessment process is uh, different where we bring um, a panel of all Indigenous assessors to the table to assess your project. So that is the difference. Um, in other programs, you know, your, your applications are at the table with artists um, from all over Ontario from different cultural um, backgrounds. Okay, so this is a little bit about, you know, how to find information um, about um, grants specifically for Indigenous artists. Some are, are mixed, like the skills, career, and development, 
um, dance training and curatorial projects. So in order to get into our system to apply, I have, um, so you'll go to apply here. Once you go there, it will prompt you to fill out a, um, a, a profile for yourself. Um, you know, it will, it will require your name, your email, um, contact number. Once you've created that, um, it will allow you to get into the system, which we call Nova. And this is how it will look once you're, um, you. once you've created a profile, um, it will bring you to uh, this internal system that we have, um, you know, um, which will say your name here, but this is our training, um, our training user. So on, on the left-hand side, you'll have, um, this is where the applications live once they become live in NOVA. So, you know, I will look for Indigenous Arts projects, um, and then I can open it up. I'll, I can press details, um, and it'll bring me to the program page that we were just looking at for that particular project. And then um, you just go to apply. What will happen is it will open up the application, um, and then uh, it sort of creates a draft of the application that you've started, and it will save it to the right hand side of the profile page. So this will be applications for um, Erica Iserhoff. So I'm just gonna go into it. Peter. Okay, so this is how an application looks. I'm just gonna open it up a little bit more here. Um, so like the TAC, um, I believe they also use Smart Simple. This is a Smart Simple platform. Um, this is an application for Indigenous Arts projects. Uh, we also have, um, um, you know, project information that you have to fill out. This is where you'll have an accessibility, uh, the accessibility fund. So this is to support you, um, yourself, or folks in your collective, or members of your organization that uh, um, need any type of accessibility support if uh, you're deaf or have a disability. So it would go into, into this form. Um, and then also, yes, you have to fill out artistic merit section, um, impact, uh, viability, budget, which I'll get into later, um, and the budget um, um, and budget notes. So always make sure to um, uh, review what the requirements are for that particular program. So for Indigenous Arts Projects, we require budget notes, we require support material, um, a letter of support from your community, uh, bio and resumes also need to be uploaded. So always make sure to double check uh, what the application actually act requires in order for you to submit. Um, also right now, because of COVID, we're asking applicants to fill out information about how you're working within this context um, and any, um, you know, anything you'd like to tell us about working in the community, especially for in the community projects, theater and dance where um, rehearsals might be required. So you'll have to kind of, we ask you to integrate that into um, the project's plan. Um, so please keep that in mind uh, when you're thinking about your project. And applying. Um, also, you know, uh, we ask you, you can go into the uh, NOVA and do a print preview of the application. And this will um, give you um, like a printable application where you can cut and paste the questions um, and work in Word. Um, just keep in mind there are. Uh, um, maximum word, word counts per section. Also, please note the writing tips. So these are writing tips that will actually help, help you answer the questions being asked. Um, yeah. So you'll notice there are questions and then you can cut and paste it into the application after, which is easier to work in. You can work directly in NOVA, 
um, within these tabs. Um, but keep in mind that um, we, we wouldn't want you to lose any work that you have done. So make sure to save regularly and uh, make sure to always check back to uh, what the actual deadline date is and note that um, each deadline, the application usually closes at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So just to keep that in mind. Uh, just to go over a little bit about our assessment process, like I said, um, our panels are comprised of professional artists and uh, cultural leaders from across Ontario. They represent different disciplines, geographical and um, come from cultural uh, diverse backgrounds. Indigenous arts grants are decided by assessors, assessors who are Indigenous and who are based in Ontario. So just to remind folks how uh, that is different for Indigenous arts projects and Indigenous artists and communities in schools specifically. Um, and the jury process. Um, so it's about four month turnaround time uh, from the deadline date to uh, when the notifications are sent out. Um, notifications are posted in your NOVA account. Um, we don't email you uh, like a personal email. If you did not receive a grant or if you did receive a grant, we can at times provide feedback from the assessment process. Um, so keep in mind that, um, you know, your, your applications are based on, um, you know, artistic merit, which is, uh, you know, images of your artwork that you presented in the application. Um, uh, participate, like who are your participating artists, examples um, that show artists work uh, within the community or within your own uh, personal practice. Um, you know, please consider your artist statement and or project description uh, and uploaded CVs and resumes. Um, the jury also considers the impact. So what is the benefit to the artists, to the community, uh, to participants? Is the project addressing a certain need in the community? So something to consider. Uh, and viability is based on um, the plan, the project budget, and um, schedule of activities. If you'd like to know more about the assessment process, um, please feel free to connect with me. Um, deciding on a program. Um, so yeah, so like I said, please contact us. Um, it's always good to do it, you know, um, at least, you know, a month, uh, in advance to the program closing. As we get to the program deadline, um, things tend to get, we tend to get really busy and sometimes um, can not support you in a way that we could perhaps earlier in the process or earlier um, in the months leading up to the deadline. Um, get to know the OAC's website, our um, uh, deadline dates um, and who is eligible and um, we can discuss the assessment process if you like as well, and how to build out a good application um, that can be successful within the, um, the jury process. So, you know, we're in the time that we're in, <laughs> and uh, a lot of the answers were sort of built into um, when I was talking about um, the different um, uh, categories, sorry, uh, for the TAC program. Um, but if you have any questions or concerns at all about your project activities and how they would be carried out during this time, uh, you still want to apply, you know, to support your, your project, um, you're encouraged to do so. And just to uh, email me or call me about like how you can accomplish this project in this time. Um, you know, of course we follow all of the protocols that are listed on the um, Toronto uh, websites and Ontario uh, websites for um, keeping people up to date with the COVID-19 protocols. So we follow all of those things and we just ask uh, for folks to also just keep informed about um, how things are going right now in terms of, um, you know, public presentations and gatherings and all of that. And also, um, you know, film production studios, you, you want to just uh, really kind of do your homework in terms of finding out 
uh, what is actually viable for you to do right now. Um, and if not, you know, um, and you're looking for sort of further ahead into the future, um, that, uh, um, that that can still be done, but just to contact us first uh, to make sure that your project plan is all sort of making sense. And, um, you know, we understand that things can shift too. So um, like I said before, you can always, uh, if you are awarded a grant and things change again, um, we can be in touch and we can, we can look at how uh, your work plan can shift to make your project happen. So I'll just leave it at that and uh, you know we can include maybe some links to the COVID protocols in the chat. So just to remind folks that we do have some grant writing tips. Um, each program is different but just to a basic overview. So uh, tell your story from the heart. Um, you know be as straightforward as possible. Note that um, you know the assessors have a lot of grants to read um, so try and be as clear and concise um, and think about your application holistically. So do the questions, your timeline, um, or the answer to the questions, your timeline, the budget, the budget notes, uh, your letters of support, do they all tie in to the project uh, that you're um, proposing through the application? Um, always locate yourself to who you are and your community as an Indigenous person or group or organization. Um, guide the reader with a strong and clear voice. Um, what uh, interesting and meaningful, what is meaningful about your project and what will you do? Um, who is part of the story? Who is leading? Who is supporting? And who is participating? Um, it's not always the case. Sometimes your project is, you know, a body of work led by yourself. Um, but put that in there and, and just be clear about what your intentions are and what you're actually doing. Um, location and context. Where is this happening and why is it important that it happens there? Especially if you're going into a community. Always keep in mind the, the COVID context also that we're working in right now. Find an outside eye to read over um, your application before sending it in. That always helps um, to kind of get clarity um, within the application. And here's our contact information if you want to reach us. Um, and we can connect you to other program officers and program administrators uh, to help you uh, with your application uh, for a specific programs.